I uh, wanted to reach out to you in a much more personal way than the online communications that we've been sharing through the diocese over the last uh, few weeks and month regarding COVID-19 or the coronavirus. This Sunday, uh, one of our lessons that's chosen for us is Exodus 17, 1 through 7. And it's about the, uh, the, the Jews who have left, they've been freed from Egypt and they've gone out into the wilderness and they are grumbling. Uh, and they really feel like this new way of living uh, on the road uh, with Moses is uh, actually led them to their deaths. They can't imagine life differently. And in this particular moment, uh, from our passage, they are thirsty. They don't have anything to drink. And so uh, Moses uh, goes and he strikes a rock and uh, water, living water, comes from uh, this rock. Of course, because we also know that we'll be hearing uh, passages about this uh, Jesus and the Samarian, uh, Samaritan woman at the well, uh, we know uh, that uh, this is a typological image for Jesus that will be used by the first Christians. But I want to talk a little bit more about the people there in the wilderness because what I hadn't understood uh, before is the reality. I always thought that they were thirsty, Moses hits the rock, they get something to drink, and they go on their way. But that is not kind of the midrash or broader theological teaching uh, of the people of Israel tell us. What they tell us uh, is that uh, they actually took the rock and they took it with them. And so they would set it up at, near the tent of meeting and they would regularly get water uh, from that rock wherever they were on their journey in the wilderness. In other words, the rock wasn't in one place, but rather they took the rock with them. I don't know how long you've been a member of the Episcopal Church. I don't know whether it's been from birth or maybe only a few months. You find yourselves in our community with us, but I will tell you that we've been preparing uh, for you uh, to take that foundational living water and rock of Jesus Christ with you wherever you go in the world. This is a moment in which we get to remember and practice our own experience of having that, that rock, that foundational rock and that living water with us wherever we are in the world. Your clergy, uh, your leaders are working hard uh, to ensure that we can do two things. One, uh, slow down the spread of the virus so we don't overwhelm our health system. So we're making choices we might not normally make. And two, they are trying to figure out how to provide for you, how to care for you, pastorally care for you, how to help the sick, the poor, those in need, and how to lead you in worship wherever you may be in the coming days. Uh, so they need your prayers. Uh, they need your prayers. And I'm praying for them and I'm praying uh, for you. But in the Diocese of Texas, we've been talking about this missionary spirit. We've been talking about how we leave our buildings to worship out in the world. We have campus missions, missional communities, new church starts. You and your congregations have been experimenting and trying new things. This is an opportunity for us to truly live uh, the words that Jesus has for the Samaritan woman, uh, that there will come a time when people do not worship on the mountain uh, or uh, in the temple, but they will worship the living Christ out in the world. And that is this moment for us. And so I encourage you, uh, do not be afraid. God is with us. Uh, that foundation, that living water is present with us. We've been preparing for this moment. So have hope and know that you're not doing it alone, but you're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that have come before us all the way back to that uh, group of people who left Egypt with Moses. You, you are surrounded by their witness, the witness of scripture, and you're surrounded by the witness of your community. So instead of closing the doors and hiding with fear behind them, find and hear the word of hope for you and discover uh, that it's a moment to lean in, to uh, know your neighbors, uh, to pray together, uh, to find new ways to gather uh, virtually in this short amount of time over the next few weeks while we will uh, help the rest of our society uh, deal with a very uh, pernicious uh, virus. But we know, and this is the whole framework of Lent to remind us as we head towards Holy Week and Easter, that illness, sickness, any disease, even death, none of that can separate us from the love of God and none of that will have the last word.
the end of the day, God is victorious in Christ Jesus. This is our faith. This is what we place our hope in. This is the moment for us, uh, not to doubt we're going to doubt, but to rather trust, uh, to find in the doubt our hope and our trust uh, in Christ. So know that I and your diocesan team, your bishops, your clergy, we are all praying for you uh, in this moment and seeking to find new ways and new forms uh, to do our mission in the world. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you wherever you may be this day and forevermore. Amen.